Welcome to the Weimar Church Friday Night Vespers. Isn't it nice to just have a moment to take a deep breath and be ready to welcome the Sabbath after a busy week? We're going to start with a favorite of many people. It's been one of my favorites since I was young. Number 50, Abide With Me. familiar about trusting in Jesus and the the lady who composed it Louisa as a teenager wanted to go as a missionary and she applied to go to China as a missionary but they rejected her because of her bad health so she went ahead and married somebody whose last name was Steed and her name is Louisa Steed and unfortunately something happened one day that nobody ever wants to happen and that is that her husband drowned and left, left them poverty-stricken. And one day she and her four-year-old were, um, let me just say, he drowned trying to rescue somebody else. And um, she and her four-year-old were out of food, and she prayed, and the next morning, miraculously, a basket of bread and fruit had, was right there for her. And so she wrote this song, "'Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus."
sing a song of praise that is very uh, simple and it's around. And whether you've heard it or not before, I think you'll catch on really quickly. And I think there are just enough of us to be able to do this. And so we're going to sing it through. It's the words are very simple. Praise the Lord together, singing Alleluia. And I'm so glad the Ramirez has arrived because that's going to help this section a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so we're going to sing it through uh, a couple times all together. And then once you've caught on, we will split into three groups. And we'll have this be the first group right over here. Anyone that's over here. Then the second group will be these people over here. But the people at the back, please sing with group number three over there. So anyone who's, except the Ramirez's, we need them over here. <laughs> but anyone else who's at the back, please sing with group number three. And But in the, we're going to all sing together for now. Praise the Lord together. Praise the Lord together singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. One more time. Praise the Lord together singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. One more time, let me split. Praise the Lord together singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We'll start. Praise the Lord together singing Praise the Lord together singing Praise the Lord together singing Alleluia. Good evening, everyone. I always love these little rounds of praises. It makes, it makes us all sound good, even though we can't sing really well. I know that when I drink. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe some of I'm speaking for, for myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, for the, I remember in college, we would have these rounds, and then it, it would just sound beautiful, all of us singing together. And I think that's how we're going to be singing in, uh, in heaven, um, singing with the angels in, in rounds. Um, well, this has been a, a wonderful week. Um, I've had a wonderful week this week, um, and uh, my, um, I guess many of you know my son has gotten, was married a couple weeks ago, and he just came back from Bali, and he was uh, getting, getting his life ready to, uh, to undergo new life at this point, a new part of his uh, chapter in his life, and, uh, and it's kind of sad. Uh, he's going to be moving all his stuff out to move to Fresno. And uh, we're a, bit, a little bit sad about that, but happy that he's in, with a new fam good family that's going to be supporting him and getting his, new, his business going down in Fresno. So I'm thankful for, for that. And, and he'll be coming this week, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see him, <laughs> see him next Sabbath when he comes. But um, praise the Lord. Everybody have a good week, a, a blessed week this week. Amen. It's a blessed week. Amen. So I'm thankful for the Sabbath. I'm thankful for um, the time that we can rest and fellowship and put our eyes upon the Lord. And I'm grateful that uh, Elder Brownell has made it this evening. It gave me this, a great sigh of relief that he came and um, that we'll be, listen, be anxious to hear his words tonight. Let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank thee so much, Lord, for your blessing that thou was given us uh, this week. We thank you so much, Lord, for the sunshine and the warmth that the, you've given us. We especially thank you for the Sabbath, as um, the Sabbath hours are coming upon us. We ask you, Lord, your spirit will be resting upon our hearts and our ears as we hear your messages this, uh, today and tomorrow, and that we may, may be uplifted. We may join our hearts with you, with the angels above, and the Holy Spirit together, and that we may be blessed and uh, uh, that uh, we may be able to be refreshed for this coming new week. We ask you that I'll be with uh, Elder Brownell as he brings the message tonight. 
We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Tom. I apologize for making your heart race there. I know that it's not fun when your speaker shows up right at the beginning because that is late and uh, that's not fun. Uh, in fact, you know, this evening the title is, is rest and entering uh, the rest and that it's not restful when your speaker comes walking in uh, five minutes before they to get up there. So I apologize for that. Welcome friends, welcome family, welcome those of you who are joining us online. We're so grateful to be entering the Sabbath rest together. I'd like to just join uh, Dr. Tom as I just pray for a moment. Father, I just pray that as we contemplate the words that you have given your servants before us in this time, that we would be blessed. And we pray, Father, for your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts and minds as we once again recall the blessedness of the rest that you call us to. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. So as I was doing some study on, on rest, I didn't have as much time as I would like to have um, taken because there was a, a particular story that was really fascinating to me and I was un unable to find it. And I actually just haven't had time to get on my computer this week. Um, I took my computer out of my office to go home to do work there and uh, left it and it still remains there and so I realized that sometimes the Lord plans these things and I'm not sure exactly what for initially but sometimes uh, they have a blessing in the end so I'm praying that uh, the Lord had his hand in this and um, it, in contemplating this this subject of rest you know at New Start we have this acronym uh, these seven wonderful health principles and they're held together by the what? The trust in divine power. It's the eighth one. Uh, and, you know, God's plan for us to rest is a very comprehensive one. And it is more than just for rest from uh, daily labors, uh, rest for our mind. Uh, there is a spiritual nature to this that we enter. In fact, um, the rest that we experience isn't necessarily a time where there is inactivity. If you even look at physiologically, um, there's a lot of things that are taking place when you rest, but it's necessary and we call it rest. And um, it was so fascinating to me that this morning, um, I got a call from Dr. Ratsara and he shared with me a wonderful story of a man who experienced some incredible blessings, which I hope to in the future share because uh, it was really fascinating. This man learned how to take the most advantage of rest, and he could actually sleep for very short times because his rest was so valuable. You know, we actually teach these things when it comes to like food and exercise to make the most of your exercise time, doing it at the right time of day so that you get the most benefit. Well, the same thing holds true for rest, and it's um, been studied as well. In fact, I remember when my father told me, get the hours before midnight because they're worth the most, right? And we see, hear that um, in the writings of Ellen White. Well, what about those who don't have um, Ellen White or maybe they don't trust this, this incredibly valid piece of literature? Fascinatingly enough, uh, the University of Pittsburgh also has done a study and found, in fact, their writer for their article said that um, try to get to sleep by 10 o'clock. Actually, nine o'clock would be better because the hours before midnight have been shown with the circadian rhythm to be the most beneficial for your body. Another couple fascinating things as well, and we'll go into them later. I just wanna talk a little bit about the Sabbath because you know we have an incredibly uh, intricate being and our body is much restored with this seven day cyclic um, rest. And as you're aware, there is some uh, ch times that they were tried to change the calendar to, I think it was the French that tried the 10 day uh, calendar. And there was so much depression in society, they quickly halted that and that did not take place. And it's been tried in humanity over time to try to change those cycles. And it causes much destruction to the human body, to the mind. And I just can't th help but think how miraculous it is 
that when people go back to this, even without knowing, when they go back to the seven-day cycle, it has a profound impact on health. Um, but truly, we know it's because of our design. And that is where it really becomes important, because the Sabbath is the blessing for us to enter into. And I did some, uh, some other research, and I'll talk to you about that in just a few minutes. Very simple, and I don't want to lab uh, be laborious in this, because also, as I read in some counsel here, I want to read to you. It says this, God is merciful and his requirements are reasonable. In accordance with the goodness and benevolence of his character, the object of the Sabbath was that all mankind might be benefited. Man was not made to fit the Sabbath. Man was not made to fit the Sabbath. For the Sabbath was made after the creation of man. Why? To meet his necessities. So it's a necessity. After God had made the world in six days, he rested and sanctified and blessed that day, which he rested from his work. Did God need to rest? It's kind of a loaded question, isn't it? Yeah, it depends on what you need. Thank you. I appreciate you. I like interaction. Yes, um, God's hand is not shortened. He is not wearied. So why would he need rest? You know, some of these things, I don't know that I, ha I have my human theories and my ideas, but I don't know that I know exactly why. But I'm excited to take a little time, some Sabbath, and have a conversation with these powerful heavenly beings to understand more about why that design is. I know enough that it is a benefit to want to look more into it, and we have eternity to do some of these wonderful investigations. So he set apart that special day for man to rest from his labors, that as he should look upon the earth beneath and the heavens above, he might reflect that God made all of these things in six days. So there's a benefit to rest in that it causes a reflection. Now, interestingly enough, are we able to reflect um, well if we're exhausted? Was God exhausted at the end of the day? Is that why he made the night? No, I don't believe so. And the reason I believe that he was not is because we often see after that creation account that God looked at what he had done. So he is reflecting and he's going over this. So he had energies to look and to see. The Sabbath is a time where we can look and see that we are made of, by God and that we are created in his image and that the things around us are designed for our enjoyment and our strength. So the Sabbath is very beneficial, and we must have energy on the Sabbath. Isn't that interesting? We go into this rest with we need enough energy that we're not completely exhausted. I, many times in my young life, have not taken the time to make sure that I have proper energies to be a blessing on the Sabbath and to be blessed. And I will tell you in a few minutes about the scientific evidence of that as well. I won't go into great detail, but that was studied. In order to keep the Sabbath holy, it is not necessary that we enclose ourselves in walls, shut away from the beautiful scenes of nature and from the free, invigorating air of heaven. We should in no case allow burdens and business transactions to divert our mind from the Sabbath of the Lord. And that seems very basic, right? We have learned to enjoy the Sabbath without having the burdens of business. But the mind cannot be refreshed, enlivened, and elevated by being confined nearly all the Sabbath hours within walls, listening to long sermons and tedious formal prayers. The Sabbath of the Lord is put to wrong use if thus celebrated. The object for which it was instituted is not attained. The Sabbath was made for man to be a blessing to him by calling his mind from secular labor to contemplate the goodness and glory of God. And this takes energies, doesn't it? So it's really important that we have a balanced week. 
that as we prepare for the Sabbath, we can come into it with energy and strength. And I once um, contemplated this as my parents changed how they kept the Sabbath. Now, we never worked on the Sabbath because I was brought up in an Adventist home that preciously adored the Sabbath. But I remember that my family would work so exhaustingly during the week that when we would come to Friday night, us kids still had some energy. My parents were done. And we'd be, you know, bouncing on their bed and they've taken their showers and they're wanting to read us a story. But there was imbalance. And I remember my mom caught this blessing of seeing the, in, the need to have enough energies to, to be together. And so she started ending her Sabbath work, whether she was done with everything she wanted to get done or not, with a little bit of time before Sabbath. And we would go for a walk or we would go see something in nature. And then when the, the Sabbath hours came, we were in prayer with one another. We were enjoying a meal together or sitting down to read a story together. And I remembered that my parents having that time and having a little energy to come into the Sabbath hours was such a blessing and it completely transformed our Sabbaths. And my parents also saw the necessity of being active on the Sabbath day and helping others, doing something that is outside of our normal work week and reaching out in evangelistic efforts. And this takes energies, but it's a different energy, isn't it? It's an energy that comes from the Holy Spirit as you're inspired to spread the gospel to another one of your brothers or sisters in darkness. So it is a necessity that the people of God assemble to talk of Him, to interchange thoughts and ideas in regard to the truths contained in His Word, and to devote a portion of time to appropriate prayer. But these seasons, even upon the Sabbath, should not be made tedious by their length and lack of interest. Isn't that interesting? Wonderful balance, isn't it? I enjoyed that quote. You know, the Sabbath has other blessings too, and I want to share with you uh, a story. This happened um, here a few years back. We weren't living here on the Weimar University campus at the time. We had moved from New England back to this area and purchased a home over on the American River Canyon here. And um, when we came to move onto campus, we had been renting our home for a while, and it was a significant amount of work, our home, to keep maintained and be here. And we had a new baby boy at the time. You know him as Seth. He runs around here. So this was at least eight years ago. And I found uh, the necessity to lay our home on the altar and ask, Lord, Lord, should we be selling our home? And so my wife and I thought together and we said, well, we will put it on the market for a very short period of time. And I knew in my heart to find a realtor that would do that would be a little bit challenging because they take a little bit of work to market to invest in selling a home. But we thought that would be our fleece and that we would do a three month uh, contract if someone would do that. And that would be clear whether we were to keep our home or to sell our home. It wasn't in the best of times for sales, um, but we thought if the Lord wanted it done, uh, he had done things for us like that in the past, and he would make it clear. So we um, prayed about that, and I remembered as I went to make a call to a realtor that there was a woman when we first got to California. We were down in Auburn taking a walk on Main Street, and there had been that day um, some type of street fair. I'm not sure exactly what had been going on, but um, there was quite a bit of people out, and the girls and my wife and myself, this was before Seth was born, were walking, and a woman walked up to me, and she handed me a business card, and she said, if you ever sell your home, call me, or if you're ever interested in buying a, a home, would you call me? I'm just getting a business started in this area. And so I took her card, and I said, well, thank you. We just actually got settled into our home, um, but that was very kind of you. Um, I'll do that. And I put my, the card in, in a pocket. You know, that card disappeared. But when I went to sell uh, the home, and this is years later, I contemplated my um, words to her, and I had told her that I would call her. I had no idea what her name was. I didn't know where that card had gone. It had obviously gone in the trash. So I prayed and said, Father, um, I made a promise to someone. I did it probably uh, without giving it a lot of thought because I have no way of knowing who this was, except that you would reveal it to me. And I remember um, that it was a, a long and unique last name. That didn't give me a lot uh, to go on. 
And knowing that she had just come to the area and start, was starting a business, I thought, well, I'll look around Auburn there and just kind of browse some of the local businesses. I didn't have a lot of time to invest in this, but I felt like it was a necessity because I had made a promise to this woman. And I looked and I found nothing. Then a few days later, I was driving from some dear friends of ours, the Warners. They actually used to work here at Weimar University before it was Weimar University. And she was in the education department, really precious woman. That, and I had been there to visit Gary and his precious wife. And on my way from their home, driving back towards, um, towards my home, there was a sign and it had this very unique last name and the Holy Spirit said, that's the one. I turned around, took a picture of the sign and went home and told my wife, we need to contact this woman and find out if she was the one handing out business cards. Sure enough, she had and her name was Rhonda. So we contacted Rhonda and we said, Rhonda, here's the thing. Um, we have felt impressed to sell our home. And I said, we're Christians, and I know I had given you my word to contact you when we went to sell our home. And she said, oh, well, that's very nice. Thank you for contacting me. And I said, the unique thing is that we're only gonna give it uh, three months on the market, and then uh, we plan to, to take it off the market. And we just wanna know if you're willing to do that. And she said, you know, I would do that. So there, we had a deal. and. Um, she came out and saw our home and took some pictures. And I said, now, there's a few things um, I had told her. There's a few things I want to talk about when you, when you go to market our home. I said, one is, <clears throat> we're going to ask that you not show our home from Friday evening to Sabbath evening. So, and we really like those hours of, of Sabbath. We keep Sabbath. So that's sundown Friday to sundown Sabbath. And she said, oh, that shouldn't be a problem. So I said, good, that I'd rather the home not be uh, shown during those hours. She said, that's, that's not an issue. <clears throat> and we arranged things, signed the papers, and the house sat on the market. And then it was time for the house to come off the market, or three months later, and she called me and said, Steve, this is a Friday afternoon. I've got a, a family from the Bay Area. I think this home is exactly the home for them. They've been looking and they're gonna come up tomorrow. Now, I know you're gonna be gone to church, but I'll just, just do a drive-by and look at, at the home with them. Um, if you'd rather me wait, I could, I, but I need to be able to show them the home. And just in some way, I need to come to your yard, I need to drive in, maybe they could just look at the front of the house. And you know, I thought, I think I'm keeping the commandments. I'm not having anybody come there and labor on my home, on, my, on the grounds. I mean, surely they could drive by the home. These things are going through my mind. The Holy Spirit spoke to me Kind of like the same voice, but I hadn't at this time contemplated it, of the promise that I had made to her. And I thought, you know, I need to press that I had told her that this was our, our deal. And so I did. I remember um, the very conversation, and I stood on the front porch, and I said, you know, um, I can't have that happen. This is the sacred Sabbath. And I realized, and I said, Rhonda, I know that this may not be um, precious to you, but it's, it's so very precious, and I don't even real, think you realize that it may actually be protective for you, and I want you to enjoy the blessedness of the Sabbath, but I can't force that upon you. I know that's, this is a free will thing, but it's so important to me. This is why I made this deal at the very beginning, and she sighed, and she said, you know, Steve, um, I get that, and I want to respect that, but you have to understand you probably will not sell this home, and right then I realized too, a commission you know, was on the line for her too. And so this is a point of decisions for, for mobile people. And I thought, you know, Lord, is this Sabbath then gonna be a sour thing in her mind because now it's robbed her of this money because our contract is over and this is your fleece. I really need to abide by the letter. And what is it? Is it right to protect her thoughts of the Sabbath? Is that my duty? And so you see this challenge I was in, and I thought, you know, it's not my work to play God. I will honor the Sabbath. And I said, Rhonda, as I understand, I must honor the Sabbath. And we made this deal, and I really appreciate that you're willing to uphold it. I didn't ask her again. I just said, I appreciate that you were willing to uphold it. I affirmed her words in the beginning with her. 
And she said, okay, Steve, thank you very much. Hung up the phone, done. Interestingly enough, <clears throat> the Lord did sell our home, and she was the realtor for that. I don't believe it was that family that sold it. And I don't remember all the details of how, what transpired the, the next uh, few days as these things happened. My life was very busy at the time. But a few years later, we're at a Christmas party with some family. Actually, you might know uh, Pastor Jeff Richards here at um, the Grass Valley Church. And we were there at his home. And one of their family members was there visiting from out of state. And they were conversing with my wife, I believe, and telling her a story about this woman that they had met and who they had rented a place when they came down to visit family. And my wife said, Steve, you need to come here and hear this. And so I did. And they told the story about uh, this, this place that they were staying and the woman's um, newfound love of the Lord and her desire to be baptized. And she had planned to be baptized. And I listened to the story of a woman who now had uh, been renting space in her room through like an Airbnb. And they, this family uh, of the Richards, had come and were staying with her. And she was relaying to them the, the blessings in her life that were happening. And she said, you know, it actually happened um, to me. I realized the blessedness of the Sabbath in a very odd way. I was selling a home for some folks that stood for the Sabbath, and I remember that impacting my mind so impactfully. She said, what is this that someone would literally um, make a wholesale of a home? And even though it had been incentivized to, to do so, they were willing to lay it all on the line um, over this Sabbath day. And she said, I need to know more about this Sabbath. And she looked into it, and she went to a local church and started visiting with the Adventist pastor there. And um, this Rhonda that we had dealt with uh, was baptized. You know, and we had known nothing of these two years that had transpired. It was just a moment in time. My wife had has stayed in contact with her after that then and um, invited her over and taken her on ski trips. But she became a precious friend of ours actually um, more uh, later in time because we had to then find her and go, Rhonda, what is this story? We're so excited, this joyous time. You know, to enter the rest of the Lord is not only a blessing for us, but it's a blessing for others. We may not even know on this earth the blessing that it is in keeping his commandments. The commandments are not laborious. They are for our delight and for our restoration. And I think about how another family, a family member of God was restored through the values that he has put in his commandments and demonstrated in sharing those with us and allowing us to experience that blessing. So I, I tell this story uh, just so that it would be an encouragement to you because it's often that we may be challenged with these things to even protect the Sabbath in name. You know, here I was thinking about maybe this would cause her to be upset at a God she doesn't even know to, um, and I needed to protect somehow the Sabbath. It's not our job. Our job is to trust the Word of God implicitly. And, it, and his blessings flow from that. Amen. You know, um, I want to read real quickly about the science of, uh, of rest here, and that is this. And I'll read from this. It was published in 2016. I know this kind of... Here we go. Sorry. I'm trying to get my phone to wake up and work here. I think it was going into a rest mode. She writes, my health challenge to you for the next week is to get to sleep before 10 p.m. Although 9 p.m. is ideal. Why? Because every hour that you sleep before midnight is equivalent to sleeping double thereafter. The extra energy that your body has before midnight can explain this. You see, the repair and detoxification that makes us feel revitalized after a good night's rest is actually energy driven. 
Your body needs energy to sweep away the clutter, rejuvenate your organs. It's a lot of work. The brain is just as active during sleep as it is during the day. And your brain is a major consumer of glucose energy and calories. Have you ever said, I'm so tired that I can't sleep? Well, maybe, and I've experienced that, you've experienced where you drank coffee or actually made, um, or something stimulating, and it actually caused you to, uh, to become sleepy, that's because your body needs energy to enter the sleep cycle in the first place. This is very interesting. And so I know it's um, maybe a little bit of a hard jump, but it takes energy and effort to preserve the Sabbath. And I remember that on that Friday when I had this conversation with Rhonda, it seemed, um, it, it took a lot of going over for me and I was really wrestling with this. But I realized later that um, this going through this labor of love, of the commandments of God, really caused me to value more. Now, after that experience, I value the Sabbath in a greater, uh, to a greater extent. And it also allowed her to now know and be uh, blessed. And I was just thinking about the inner workings of even humanity. We're designed to be together, to come together, to worship together, and to enter the rest together. And when one is labored, we should be, and maybe exceedingly labored, we should be working to help them be able to come into that rest too. In fact, the spirit of prophecy, there's so many wonderful things on this, very clearly points out that those in ministry who are laboring uh, much more difficulty should have those that have more ease in their life to lift those labors so that they can enter that rest. And I thought, wow, it's so much like that, even in the body as, they were, um, as this study found. And there's so many wonderful things that on a very uh, small level happen on a very large level in the human family. Believe it or not, sleep is the most important part of your day, as Sabbath is the most important part of our week. Scientists at Pittsburgh University discovered that just as one hour less sleep could mean a child would be twice as overweight. Isn't that fascinating? Just one hour less of sleep could mean a child would have twice the opportunity of being overweight. That would be very challenging for these poor young children. Sleep loss changes hormone levels, it makes you crave unhealthy foods, and lowers your motivation levels. During the first period of deep sleep, growth hormone is released, which rebuilds old damaged cells, especially in the skin. No wonder it's called beauty sleep. And you know what I was thinking this? It's very much like this in the keeping of the Sabbath. You know, um, when I learned as a young man, because I strayed from the blessedness of the Sabbath after being raised in that environment um, in my teen years, I didn't see the real benefits of carefully guarding the Sabbath. But as I aged, I realized the benefits and blessings. But it was during that time um, when I didn't see its benefits as great that I missed out on much. And it's, you know, it's the same way we need um, for the rest of our bodies, we need the spiritual rest, to enter that spiritual rest as well. You know, in Hebrews, it, it talks about these things of entering these restful times. And it says this, therefore, while the promise of entering this rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good, the good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he had said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his work. And again in this passage he said, they shall not enter my rest. What, you know, um, have you ever been, they've actually done this to individuals where they keep them awake as a form of torture. Can you imagine that? And I think, oh, that, that's awful. You know, it is so, um, and as I read this text, I thought, wow, you know, for those who disregard and don't like the rest, um, it doesn't appear that God would force them to enter that rest. We have this God, though, that desires us to, to, 
use our energies to enter it, and what a blessing we have when we enter it. For God is merciful, and His requirements are reasonable, and we are grateful for this. You know, oh, sorry, I um, am grateful that God has placed the Holy Sabbath where He did. There's many things in the future that we will be able to find out more about the benefits that He has designed in the Sabbath and the blessings that we have in keeping it. You know, our bodies need rest and this time that we have should be during the, the work week should be well balanced so that when we come to the Sabbath hours, we have the energy to, to enter that rest with strength, to be a blessing to others. And we should be looking for ways to um, have a deeper relationship with the Lord as we enter this rest, as well as the rest that we have during the week, our evening, our nightly rest. There's blessings to turning off our phones and to being off of screens because that light in the eye causes the body to be wakeful. And there's things that we can do that cause our mind to, um, to rest, and one of them is actually exercise. It is important to get physical exercise for the body to be able to enter into rest. The other thing that's really fascinating to me is being a blessing to others helps us to be at more at peace in our own bodies. In fact, it's El Eldon Chalmers uh, in the book, Healing the Broken Brain, he lists some things, and Dr. Gallant speaks about this on graduation evening to the New Start guests. And he's, the, one of the things that I thought was really fascinating is that he says, find something to do each day that's disagreeable to you, but it must be done. That to me appears as something that is a necessity that may require labor, it may uh, require um, uh, you to enter into something that is not pleasant for you, but it must be done. And if you know it should be done, and you're the one doing it, there's something that you have that is a satisfying feeling that allows you to feel at rest. That's done, it's taken care of. Um, you know, that's come to me actually in visiting a public bathroom. Now that sounds very weird, but I remember, and I'm not, you, you, can, you don't take these things to the extreme, but I don't know what the reason was, but the Lord impressed upon me one day, the bathroom was really quite nasty, and I thought, I would not want any of my family members coming to this bathroom to have to use it. And the Holy Spirit said, if this was your business, what would you want? And I just thought, for someone to get this bathroom cleaned up, and I went to leave, and he spoke to me, it's you. And there were items right there to clean it. So I thought, I'm not gonna do this forever, and every time I enter a public bathroom, but the Lord impressed me to clean the bathroom. So for whatever reason, I quickly grabbed the items and straightened up the bathroom and made it to where I could have one of my family members be there. Now, I don't know what happened after, if there was a reason the Lord had me do that or not, but it's interesting what happened to my mind after that. Instead of this tension that I felt as I had entered the bathroom and thought, oh, this is so terrible, and I just wanted to leave, I actually felt very happy about that space I was leaving, and I had a peace, like a restfulness come over me. And I thought, well, that's very interesting. And then I knew that this, that uh, Elder Chalmers had talked about in his book, Healing the Broken Brain, to find something disagreeable and to do it because it's something that must be done. And I know that the Lord was just leading me to that to help me realize the importance of doing things that were inconvenient. And now to close, I want to leave you with the thoughts of our precious Lord. You know, he had not experienced a dirty public bathroom ever. He knew precisely how to be engaged in activity, to speak things into existence with incredible power, and then to rest, to reflect. Everything he did was with perfect perfection. Our Lord left perfect bliss, bathrooms, if they have such a thing in heaven, of gold, maybe, and no filth. 
no stench. And he came to this earth as a baby, worked in a dirty carpenter shop, sweat like you and I sweat, needed to be served, and was the greatest servant to show us of his love. And he is the Lord of the Sabbath. And so it is my desire that we would enter that rest with contemplation of our precious Lord. And I'm grateful that it is Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to each one of you. Isn't he a good God that calls us into this rest? I think I'll have a deeper understanding of the song we're going to sing, O Day of Rest and Gladness, when we sing it tonight, 382. Father, we truly do ask that our affections would be drawn to you, the one that is the author of rest and restoration. Bless us as we enter these Sabbath hours, as we commune with you, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be upon us in perfect peace. In Jesus' name we pray these things, amen. Hopefully we'll have a blessed rest uh, from here on in. The Sabbath has started. I think it's starting. No, it'll be starting fairly soon. And uh, we'll have a blessing, and we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow at 9.30, we'll have Sabbath school. And at uh, 11 o'clock, uh, um, Elder Ratsara will bring our message uh, for the worship service. And we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening. <laughs>